Hey everybody, D. Williams here, and you are listening to episode number two of the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. Let's get started. Welcome to Staffing Startup.tv, the podcast that gives you direct access to the world's leading recruitment, staffing, and startup experts. D. Williams speaks with amazing thought leaders, venture capitalists, and technology trendsetters about their journey, challenges, and successes related to recruitment, staffing, and hiring. Now, here's your host, D. Williams. All right, guys. Hey. We are here, we are talking about episode number two of the Staffing Startup.TV podcast. Are you amped up today? I know you're fired up. Yes. Listen, this, it, this podcast is like so phenomenal for me because we always hear people talking about recruitment and staffing as, as a functionality, as a business, but we don't really get to talk about recruitment and staffing from a startup perspective, like how you're starting the business and, and all the, the tools and resources that you need to actually bring your business to life and to create a super profitable recruitment and staffing business. And today, I really want to dive in a little bit about the niche. And I'm not just talking about the niche. I'm talking about the power of the niche. That's right. I said the power of the niche. The interesting thing is there are so many people that are out here that are looking to start and set up and grow a recruitment and staffing business. And one of the things that I always tell individuals is that, listen, there are 19,408 to be exact recruitment and staffing agencies in the United States, right? And if we are, if there are so many recruitment and staffing businesses, how do you create a value proposition? How do you create a business model that allows you to set yourself apart from the other 19,408 staffing agencies. And it's not enough anymore, at least not right now in this day and time to say, oh, I bring a strong candidate pool or I have hundreds of candidates in my database. That's cool if you are working in the commercial side of recruitment and staffing. And when I say commercial side, I'm talking about warehouse, light industrial, customer service, you know, maybe even administrative support. That's cool from that perspective, because at that point, volume is the key, right? Um, It's not just about quality is important for sure, but volume is the key. You know, your key driver is getting those positions filled right now, right? But when you're on the professional solution side of the business, which is what I really focus on is teaching people how to build a niche recruitment and staffing business on the professional solution side. When you're on that side of the business, it's a little bit different. It really is about quality. These prof- these employers are looking for uh, talent, right? They're not just looking for a body in a seat. They're looking for talent. And so when you start thinking about taking your niche recruitment and staffing business and setting it apart from the competition or being able to create a true value proposition, it's super important that you think, what sets me apart? And I'm going to tell you, the biggest thing that will set you apart is your niche right? Is your niche. Now, let me, let me just get into this a little bit. I got to like take my jacket off here. (laughs) I got to take my jacket off here because I want you to understand the true power of the niche. When I say niche, I don't mean, um, okay, today I am going to start an IT staffing business or an IT recruitment firm. That is a niche, but it's a niche at the, at a global, at a, at a larger perspective, right? It, it's not, it's not niche enough, right? Because we've already done that. That's already been done and proven, proven and done. You're listening to the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. For more info on today's show, be sure to check out the show notes at Staffing Startup.tv. There's a book called Swim with the Sharks Without Being Eaten Alive. It's by a guy named Harvey B. Mackay. Mackay. M A C K A Y. I'm horrible with names. Anyway, in this book, they talk very lightly about being in a pool 
of um, being in an ocean, basically. And and with all, with this in this ocean, there are all these different sharks out there, right? And it's like, what do you do to set yourself apart? And and talking again about value proposition. And so when you start thinking about the niche, if you are saying I'm a staffing agency, you're general, right? Or I'm a recruitment business, you're general. When you say I focus on IT staffing or healthcare staffing, now you have created a industry specific value proposition. But guess what? That's already been done. There are tons of staffing agencies out there that are industry specific. So you've got to dig deeper into your niche, dig deeper. So now you can come in and say, okay, well, I am within the healthcare industry. However, I also place um, registered nurses. Okay. So now you're getting Uh, to be more specific about your position, but that has even already been done and it's becoming the norm. But when you take your niche one step further and you say, I am a niche recruitment and staffing agency business focusing on in the healthcare industry, um, placing RNs, but specifically RNs who support OBGYN or RNs that support cardiovascular or RNs that whatever the case may be. Now you are becoming more competitive, right? And even if you're a larger agency and you're trying to figure out, okay, I'm losing market share and I'm trying to figure out how to to gain that market share back, it may be time to take a look and analyze the positions that you have filled successfully, very quickly, and you have a strong candidate pool around. Because when you look at it from that perspective, then you can start assigning recruiters specific to those job titles and start going after clients that are specific, who need those specific positions. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense to you. It really is about being strategic around your niche. That can be your key value proposition in, in a in a in a sea with a ton of sharks, right? This will allow you to swim with the sharks without being eaten because they're all over the place. They're competing against other IT staffing firms or other healthcare staffing firms or other engineering staffing firms, right? That are a focus industry focus. But if you can say that you can successfully fill a specific type of position, that definitely sets you apart. Now, the question that I always get after I have this conversation with people is D, but am I cut aren't I cutting myself short if I do this niche thing? I mean, it makes sense, but am I not missing out on opportunity? And the answer to that question is heck, no, you're not missing out on opportunity. Because right now, if you take the time to do a search on Indeed or or on Glassdoor and you type in one type of position, let's say, for example, that that position type is, um, and I'm actually going to do this while I'm here live with you guys, because I don't want to seem like the type of <laughs> the person that doesn't really um, do what she says. Okay. So for instance, let's just say we do OBGYN. RN, right? And I'm on Indeed. Um, So I did an OBGYN position and 188 jobs came up on Indeed. So I'm going to go to Glassdoor and I'm going to do the same exact search. And I did this nationwide. Okay. And let's see what comes up. All right. So I'm going to put this title in here and you can do this with me if you're listening. If you're not driving, if you're driving, that's totally different. Don't do this. But wait, till you, <laughs> wait till you get a spot. But if you're at your in your phone or in, in you're at your computer, do the search with me so you can see. OK, so I got 129 jobs, OBGYN, RN on Glassdoor, and I got 188 jobs, OBGYN, RN, Indeed. So I'm going to change my search just a little bit and I'm going to type in registered nurse because sometimes the the search term changes everything okay so 130 came up on on the rn side on glassdoor and um the 167 came up on indeed so if you're a one-man firm or two-man firm 
OBGYN, this is just what's posted, right? This isn't actually, this doesn't reflect the entire market. This is just a small portion of the market. But think about all of the healthcare facilities that need to hire an RN that has an OBGYN background, all of the hospital. This is a great niche to, to tap into. Attention, all computer and information technology professionals. It is estimated that the business of placing contract technology workers is at least a billion dollar industry. And today, we want to show you how you can become a supplier of tech talent to companies all over the world. That's right. You can put your IT colleagues on contract and bill them out. It's not rocket science and is a great additional income. Let Staffingpreneurs Academy show you how to start your very own IT niche recruitment, staffing and consulting business. Learn more at staffingpreneursacademy.com slash IT. That's staffing, P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S, academy.com slash IT right now. It's not just about what's posted, but being what's posted does give you an idea of what's available, right? So let's do another search. I just did OBGYN nurse, and I'm going to do another search really quickly. So I'm going to do OR nurse, but this really puts you straight in the, um, let me see, operating room, I'm an O-P-E-R-A. And y'all know like my spelling is crazy. Okay, so I did operating room um, registered nurse on this particular search on Indeed, and I got 15,239 jobs. When I do it on Glassdoor, I got 64,200 jobs. And I, I don't think that they're all um, operating room because I'm looking, the, most of them are, but I'm looking and I see some other nurses. I see NICU and, and, and different things like that and case managers. But I just want you to see how you can really look at a specific p p position and see that there are more than enough opportunities for you to fill those opportunities, for you to fill those jobs. And so the larger, the more jobs of naturally, the more opportunity that you have with a niche. So you want to literally go through your positions and make sure you're choosing the right position. But let's just say you say, I focus on registered nurses and, and you see that the OBGYN has a small pool in the job space. Then you can say, I place OBGYN nurses and I place, you know, case managers and I place what have you. And so you can choose three major positions or two major positions and you completely focus on that. Now, before I dive into the next segment of this, I want to do another example because I did healthcare, but I love to do IT. So I am going to actually type in DevOps for the IT side because I know I have people out there that are passionate about the information technology section um, um, uh, sector. And I'm going to do, they have DevOps engineers, they have DevOps managers. So I'm just going to start off with DevOps engineers because DevOps right now is so freaking hot. It's insane, right? So DevOps engineer, I typed in Glassdoor, 25,363 jobs. That's one position, just one. That's not 10, 15, 20. It's one type of position. So you could open up a niche recruitment and staffing agency that focuses solely on placing DevOps engineers. When I did the search on Indeed, 13,041 jobs. Do you think that you need to do DevOps managers, DevOps this, that? You don't have to do all of that. You don't have to do all of IT. You can make a real living just placing one position if you really want it to. OK, and, and that will take I mean, Think about it now. Now I can say the things that I really want to say. I want you to think about how impactful that would be, how you are literally no longer sw us just swimming with the sharks, but you're swimming with the sharks without being eaten alive. Right. So you are now there 13,000, let's just say on Indeed, 40 and 41 jobs, 13,041 jobs for DevOps engineers. Right. So you're spending the majority of your time doing what? 
connecting with DevOps engineers. So let's just say you and your team and your team can be here in the US or virtually or wherever it is, but you and your team are literally sitting here and you're all day long, you're banging out the phones, you're banging out emails, social media, what have you. You are connecting with DevOps engineers over and over and over and over and over again. And then you've got another company on the left-hand side. And I'll I'll say any company, it could be Ronstadt, it can be Manpower, it could be um, 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 Texas, systems, whoever, but they're focused on IT as an industry, right? With not necessarily a specific niche. As far as I know right now today, that could change. But, you know, typically that's how they operate because they're larger. They can go in and they can have you know, 20, 30 recruiters across the globe, even more, and they're filling these positions, but you're a one, two, three, maybe even four or five man firm. You don't have that same power, the same bandwidth as, as those sharks. And I say that respectfully, but in, in the, in the, case of this analogy, they are the sharks, right? That that you're trying not to be eaten alive by. So you're swimming with these sharks who are out there dominating the market and filling all of these positions. But here you are, this little one, two, three, maybe four, five man firm, and you are, are, are armored with hundreds, if not thousands of senior DevOps engineers in your back pocket, right? So now you come up to the same exact company as as the company that one of your sharks is working with. And you can say, listen, your value proposition is that all you do is focus on DevOps engineers. And so when that opportunity is open or when you need one, you have your finger on the market. You, it becomes, it's a very different conversation when you can go into a company and say, hey, I know that you guys consistently hire for DevOps engineers, or hey, I see where your business is going. And at some point you're going to want to entertain hiring a DevOps engineer. That's all we do. StaffingStartup.tv is your number one source for news, information, and live interviews specific to the growth and success of niche recruiting and staffing agency business owners, Staffingpreneurs. Do you get where I'm going with this? The niche is so freaking powerful. And I'm going to tell you throughout this podcast, just about every episode that you listen to, I'm going to go back and reference the niche because I'm not here to talk to you about starting a, a, uh, a recruitment and staffing business way. That's too general. That's putting you into the ocean with the sharks and allowing you to get eaten. I don't want you to get eaten. (laughs) I want you to dominate. I want you to take market share. And the cool thing is, is when you understand just how powerful the niche is, now you're, you're taking, you're setting your business up. You're setting the foundation up for you to build a legacy business. And let me explain that a little bit more. Let me take that into, and I want you to really take that into consideration. So let's just say, and let's just use these DevOps engineers as an example, because we're here. Right. So let's just say you say, okay, D, I'm going along with you and I'm going to start my agency and it's going to focus on DevOps engineers. Right. That's it. That's all I'm going to focus on. So let's just say um, I'm going to just do really a quick search here on Indeed again, where they have find resumes. And I just want to see how many resumes you've got 12,022 resumes on indeed alone. That doesn't include LinkedIn, right? So let's go to LinkedIn because this gives you, this shows you the potential of the candidate market that you have to play with. And I say to play with, even though, um, you know, that's just because, you know, I like, this is not work for me. (laughs) This is play, but you've got uh, on here on, let's just go to people on LinkedIn, you've got 59,899. So you've got an opportunity to connect with, I'll just say just minimum 59,000, 60,000 DevOps engineers. So now you have the ability to do so much more after you place them. So not only are you creating a, 
a, um, a narrative around your business that where companies understand and they know, hey, I can go to this particular niche recruitment and staffing agency to give my DevOps engineers, but you can start creating a community around your DevOps engineers. You can start understanding what gets DevOps engineers excited, right? What they're passionate about uh, and all those different things. And then you can start creating products physical products to support them. You can start creating relationships that will help support them. You can start partnering with training companies that will help support them. When you leave the DevOps engineer space, they have to uh, uh, to um, to graduate to another position, right? They've got to get promoted. What What's that next level in that position? Because now you're developing relationships with people who are ultimately going to be promoted into the next phase. And now you're you're building out your candidate market even further. Yes, this is a very organic way of growing, but it is one of the most intelligent ways of growing your niche recruitment and staffing business. And those people will grow with you over and over and over again. Okay, so let me get, because I'm all excited. So you could do additional things like a DevOps uh, only um, a job board. You could do things like sell DevOps t-shirts. You could do things like, um, you know, um, you know, those little things, I don't know what they're called, but they're, they're really popular now and they're on the back of your cell phone and like hold them up. You can get branded um, those things, those cell phone holders. You can get branded, uh, you know, brand brand those so that you have the ability to um, to to really market to your audience because you have the eyes and the ears of of your audience. And I hope you see where I'm going with this. And um, so it's super powerful. The niche is powerful. There is power in the niche. There is power in the niche. I can't say that enough. There's power in the niche. Now, let me take it a step further. So let's just say, okay, you're working, you've, 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 you're swimming with the sharks and you're not being eaten because you have this value proposition that every other shark does not have. Now, these are all the other IT tech firms out there. And um, you're still in the back of your mind. You're saying, okay, well, yeah, Yes, I've made my first million or two million or five million or 10 million or whatever. And I'm solely focusing on um, the, the senior DevOps managers, right? Or I'm solely focusing on the RNs and the OBGYN or the OR space or whatever the, the case may be. And but I'm still concerned that that um, I am putting myself in the box, which you've already known that you're, you already noticed that you're not really doing that. But let me show you how much more you're not doing that. When you're working with companies and you have shown a a, a strong sense of value to them, they're automatically going to ask you to fill other positions. I mean, literally, there is no question around that. They're going to ask you to fill other positions. And so if that's the case, then it's like, okay, <laughs> It's like, okay, then you're no longer just filling these DevOps engineer positions, but now you're filling DevOps engineers, you're filling DevOps managers, you're filling, you know, and what other other positions that, you know, the, the client is asking you for, you start to see patterns and you start to create and duplicate what you've already done with the DevOps engineers with the next position title. And then you duplicate that over and over again until you have a full practice. And now this full practice will continue to grow and become, and yes, you will eventually be be industry focused because you you will have the ability to become industry focused because believe it or not you have paid the, the your dues you've created the paved way you've established the right relationships with the right people so that they see you as a value partner that not only provides DevOps engineers, but they know that you're going to be consistent with providing the managers. You'll be consistent with providing whatever other, whatever other positions, I got excited there, that you um, are typically filling. So, you know, the power of the niche is beyond what you will ever imagine. The power of the niche is beyond what you will ever imagine. The power of the niche is beyond what you will ever imagine. As you are thinking about growing this business, as you are thinking about taking this business to another level, I really want you to start thinking niche. I want you to start thinking legacy, niche, legacy, niche, legacy, niche, legacy, niche, legacy, niche. Ah, okay. I got excited. <laughs> But that's the direction that I want you to go in. Because let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, there is power in the niche. Thank you for listening today. 
Thanks for listening to the StaffingStartup.tv podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you'd like more information on any of our stories or would like to know how to get involved and share your story, head over to our website at StaffingStartup.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and please leave a five-star rating and a super awesome review so others can enjoy the show too. Check out the live video footage on YouTube. Have a great week and we'll see you next episode.